Hey everybody, Chris Farad here, and we've got a new series starting today, that's right. If you haven't heard of Monster Train, it's having its full release on Steam today, and we're diving in headfirst, headstrong, and probably overconfident. Uh, Monster Train's a roguelike deck builder, it takes place on a train to hell, that's right. Uh, between heaven and hell, it is connected by a train. The train is called, get this, it's called the Bone Shaker. So in my opinion, any game you got something called a Bone Shaker in there, I'm all over it. Not in the way that you think. Uh, I had one pretty successful run during the beta, and I freaking loved it. I just played it on my own, and I thought I'd reset our save progress and uh, dive into the full release, and we can build up together over time. We're going to be unlocking cards we can use to become more powerful later on, so on and so forth. You know how this stuff works. Uh, we're going to get started right away, but quickly I want to give a big thank you to Good Shepherd Entertainment for sending me an early code and sponsoring the video. should also mention this game does have multiplayer. Uh, you can have up to eight players, I think. Uh, there's daily challenges and all that good stuff. So if you guys want to see some multiplayer, let me know and I'll try to like make a friend or something and then maybe add them to my Steam list and we'll, we'll have a battle. You know, that would be cool, I think. Anyways, let's roll out, and I don't know if it's going to, like, re-tutorialize us, but um, this is all the stuff that we're going to need to eventually unlock. We have nothing uncovered right now. So with that, we're going to uh, start a new run. Let's rock and roll. Welcome to hell. Your train's carrying precious cargo, the last remaining shard of the pyre, needed to relight the fires in the depths of hell. Invaders from heaven, the winged will do anything to prevent you from completing your journey. You must make wise decisions. <laughs> Great. And build up your band of monsters to have any hope of success. Good luck, Hellborn. Let's roll out. Okie dokie. So, a uh, couple of things going on that will... Uh, it's probably going to tutorialize us. We start out in the limbo, this wasteland. We're going to try to make our way into hell. There's a whole bunch of spots that we need to try and get through. So, we are currently here. The end goal is this frozen heart. And we'll see. Buckle up. Along the way, we're going to need to make choices about uh, certain resources that we might have access to. Uh, we're fighting against the Heaven's Priest. So these disciples have dedicated themselves to the service of Heaven and will attempt to restore the life of their companions. Not if I have anything to say about it. And if we hover over these uh, previews here, uh, this trusted priest, so he can restore five health. He's a healer. The Forged Disciple, who's tanky-ish early on, but only does two damage. And then we've got this guy. He's a, a boss with Relentless, and that means that um, they'll continue going uh, upwards towards your pyre, which you ultimately need to defend in your train. Uh, These are the boss guys, so let's rock them. Okay, this is the pyre that we need to protect. So it does look like the tutorials reset when I reset our save progress. That's totally cool. Uh, it's good for everybody to be on the same page. You have 80 health right now. It also does 20 damage. So when enemies do reach this, it can also sort of defend itself. Enemies aborted your train. Uh, they enter at the lowest level and then they move up every turn. If they reach the top, they're going to attack the pyre and vice versa. You can play each unit card once per battle. Uh, sounds good. Let's rock and roll. So we're going to start with this guy. He's kind of our special, our Hornbreaker Prince, our special unit. And he's got multi-strike. So he does six damage times two on every attack. Let's put him right in here. And each floor of the train has limited capacity indicated by these slots. You can see these pips at the top of the uh, cards as well. Combat previews are enabled. So what this does, it shows you if you just played this out, here's what's going to happen, which is really nice. Um, there's attacks that go back and forth. Enemies attack first, and then we attack them. And it keeps repeating until someone dies. And if nobody dies, well, then we got bigger problems and we'll probably run into that a couple of times. We're also going to play the train steward. I'm going to have him be kind of like this tank. Uh, these do attack like front to back, which you'll see when we play this out. And then we've got some spells here. We've got three torches. We can cast two of them. This is our uh, mana or ember here. And then we can see our draw pile. You can also see our uh, pyre stats at the top. And then we can see our overall deck as well, which is honestly pretty basic because we just started the game and we're going to need to unlock things as we go. So let's uh, torch up the healer a little bit here. We don't have to worry about that. And then we might as well throw this in and we'll let this play out. So pay attention to how the attacks go and which order they go in. She attacks, we both attack. And she moves up. Cool. Now we have to defend as this goes up. We kind of want to be thinking, well, 
Where do we place these guys optimally? Uh, this, we only have one slot left in this floor capacity. There are cards that can change this kind of stuff, and there's uh, different artifacts that you'll see soon that can influence this, but for now, we only got five slots. So I'm gonna bring this train steward up here. Uh, he does five damage. This is gonna be fine. They're gonna attack each other once, but I can torch this. And that way, she's got the X now. That means she's gonna go down. She'll still do the two damage, but we can restore that with some healing. Uh, do we want to torch their healer again? Or do we want to heal? We're going to survive this. So this unit looks scarier than it is. It's only doing two damage right now. It's not that big of a deal. It's going to get a lot more wild. Now, I like putting the guys that can do like our bigger damage or multiple attacks in the back and then kind of having tanks up front. Just the nature of the way these guys take damage because they're attacking front to back uh these guys tend to last a little bit longer so if we have higher damage amounts back there seems pretty good uh let's put another train steward in here and we'll start restoring some of these guys i could drop another one up top but we're not even getting to that level yet so let's just apply some some healing they're also getting that plus one regen i'm pretty sure that in the beta you didn't get that regen amount where it's restoring that extra uh, health stack at the end of the turn. It does decrease every turn, but still, it's a nice little uh, change that I don't think was on Restore before the release. Anyways, let's see what's going to happen on Floor 2 here. Yeah, not bad. Not bad. And then for this first area, this is our boss. His Relentless ability means that combat uh, continues in the room until you or he is defeated. Now, even if we just put him up to the top of the spire, you can see we've got uh, 20 attack and 80 health. Like, we would be able to defeat that. But we're going to try and save this because that pyre health is what gets us through all of this. It has to last this entire time. There's ways to regen it as we go, but we'll figure that out. Okay. So we don't need to do any restore. We might as well just throw all of these torches into this guy and let her rip. Almost got him on the first one. That was pretty good. And we could torch him. Is this like a sad way for him to go? For him it is. Okay, seems basic, I know, but just wait. Uh, so we've got 50 coins, and then we have clan pack and allied clan pack. All right. So when you get past the first run, I think when you start, you get to pick your main faction, then like an allied faction. So you can get cards from each of those. Now, we only have two unlocked right now. It's these. It's the two that we see here. There's one kind of focused on healing, and then one's focused on uh, those spells that we were casting and our main character card. So let's see what they're giving us here. Um, so Fledgling Imp, when we summon him, we're gonna apply three rage to friendly units. Now rage is um, two attack damage per stack. So that's gonna do six with a rage of three, but then it decreases every turn. So over time, those units get a little bit worse. Um, we've got Molting Imp, summon deal five damage to enemy units. That's not bad. It's not bad. You technically would get more damage out of this guy if your units survive. Um, the abilities only affect the floor that we play them on. We also have Vent. So deal two times 2x damage to enemy units. So if we spend all of our Ember on it, then we could do six damage to enemy units at this point because we only have three Ember, but maybe we can upgrade that. I don't know. These are fine. I think we're going to go... I think we're going to go here. Let's do the, the rage. We could also skip this too and just take the cash, which we can spend later to upgrade cards, get new cards, get rid of cards, so on and so forth. Ally, think like Slay the Spire stuff. Uh, and then our allied pack, we've got Steel Enhancer, so we can get plus three attack and plus three uh, health, which isn't bad. Uh, deal three damage and move the unit to the front. So if somebody's in the back that we want to get rid of first, this actually might get us out of a, out of a bad situation. Or restoring retreat, descend a unit and restore 10 health. Now, what I've heard is that when we ascend or descend a unit, that can override the maximum slots, which could be beneficial. 
and I've never tried this. So, you know what? Let's go for it. It's expensive. It's two ember, but, you know. It's for the it's for the strategy guide that we'll be writing. Uh, Merchant of Steel, forge your powers or forge your units to gain new powers. Gain a Hellhorned unit or forge your spells to gain new powers over here. Okay, so I see. We can buff our spells. We can buff our units. Gain an Awoken unit or gain a Hellhorned unit. Now, this is from the different factions. So, Hellhorned and Awoken. And you can see up here our primary clan, Hellhorned, Allied, Awoken. And we'll, get, we'll level these up as we go. I know this because I completed one run and we leveled them up, but I erased it. I erased our save progress so that we could all start this together. Uh, do we want to forge our spells or forge units? I think units right now. Okay. So we have a couple choices. We have 125 gold. We can get rid of cards right now. We can re-roll our offerings. We can upgrade a unit with attack damage. Uh, spikes of four. Now spikes are when this person gets attacked, the attacker takes one damage per stack. So four damage in this case. Or when this unit dies, return its card to the top of the pile, which would be super nice. Problem is <laughs> we only have these basic dudes. So I don't think we need to buff any of these guys. We've got these train stewards and then we've got the fledgling imp. Um, we're going to pass on that for now. We'll maybe upgrade a unit with spikes. <laughs> Let's say here. Let's do this guy. And these represent the slots that you can upgrade. So they can take two upgrades each. Let's do that. And I, you know what? I'm also going to give them... Uh, let's give them some attack. Why not? This is going to be like our power, power steward. This is the chief train steward. The team leader, if you will. Um, let's roll. That's 85. We're... we're spent half of our life savings already. Uh, what's cool with this is like it's an either or on a lot of these paths, right? So we have to make the decision. We take all of the what's on the left or all that's on the right. Gain a Hellhorn unit. All right. So Steelworker. Resolve gain armor five. Damage is dealt to armor before health. Each point of armor blocks one point of damage and is then removed. And Resolve triggers after combat. So they have to survive to get that armor, and then they kind of start building that. Or we just have this super tank. Um, he's four ember, though. And, like, that's that's a bit of a tease, because I can't even play it yet. But it's like, do we want that in our deck right now if we can't even play it? I don't think so. All right, let's roll. So now we're facing up against the Barb Disciples. And this is all, like, I think listed out in here, um, what we're going to be facing against. So, like, here you can see the Cliffs of Fallen Souls, um, the Bogworm's Remains, and it tells you, like, what kind of boss you're going to be running into. So, anyways, we'll dive into that later. These Spike Foes will make direct attacks more painful. Using spells from afar will let you fight without sacrificing your units. So there's a Disciple Protector who doesn't do any attacks, but he's got 20 armor, which is a bit annoying. And then a Conduit Redirector. He can enchant Granny 2 Spikes, and we know what Spikes do, because we learned about that. And then we have the Last Night of the Disciples. This is going to be the boss at the end of this little room, and uh, he's got 7 attack, 110 health. Not too bad, I hope. Okay. I like to, it like, play, it shows the song it's currently playing. I love it. Okay, okay. So what we can do is we could we could in some instances it might be worth like saving ember, but let's throw this down. And then we're going to throw this new steel worker in front. Uh he'll be fine. And then we can torch this one. It will do the uh the buffs. So let's go. And now we just have to chew through this guy's armor. It's not too big of a deal. Let's end this. I'm not sure if this does carry. I don't think it does. Because we left one, so... Yeah, cool. All right. So next, uh, Restoring Retreat. That's our Descend that we got. We don't need to play that right now. We could start moving up to here. This guy moves up, but honestly, let him. Doesn't doesn't He doesn't hurt us, so no worries there. Uh, we don't even need to do any regen. We might as well get somebody onto the second level. This train steward can take care of this one. And then we've got spikes here. 
And then the conduit redirector again. Let's just kill with the spells. No problem. See you later. Bye bye. And we're going to get another five armor here. So we're just going to, this guy's going to become, he's going to be money. He's going to be good. No attack. I love these sits there and takes the beat down. Like a good little, what's his name? What is he? Good little disciple protector. Good boy. All right. What do we do next? We do have a slot down here. We can apply this rage, which might not be bad. Um, it doesn't really matter in this scenario, but maybe what we do is build up the the second row with the train steward, and then we'll apply the rage. The thing is, uh, that's going to decrease every turn. I think it's I think it's turn based. Maybe it's on every attack. Yeah, it decreases every turn. So we're going to miss out on this turn, but so be it. And then here's our here's our power unit that we built or upgraded. Let's put him in the top level. And let's let her rip. Okay, so we're at the final wave here. Let's do this. This guy's got 15 armor. Look, so these guys are all getting toasted because he's hitting pretty, pretty hard. Pretty hard. I kind of want to see what happens if I descend somebody. Just to like put on more here that, than we're allowed to. Yeah, cool. It does work. Now, it looks... I don't know if we have uh, the ability to choose uh, where they go. Maybe it just automatically sends them to the back. But uh, let's play this guy up here then. And we're going to deal as much damage as we can. 74. This one's going to survive, unfortunately. But let's go. These guys are all going to die. Want to speed up combat? I, I'm okay with this right now, but we can. Okay. So here, I think what we do is we're just going to throw torches into, I guess, her. To get rid of these spikes. And then we'll torch here as much as we can. By the time we get up here, I think we got a good chance at taking out the boss before it reaches the pyre. Depends what we draw next turn. Yeah, cool. We should be fine. We're going to survive. No problem. Um, let's torch here. Why not? And then we'll just throw this on. Boom. Okay. We're cruising right now. One turn boss rush. You get a little bonus here. For defeating the boss this many turns before it would have reached the pyre room. Oh, nice. I didn't know that. So, uh, nice. We get two extra cards. Some gold. Let's roll. Ritual of battle. Apply a rage of six for three, though. But, you know, if you got towards the end of a fight, that could be kind of nice. Another fledgling imp or that vent again. I'm going to take this. I, I don't know if it's going to be good. It's pretty expensive. A rage of six is not bad. And then, Restoration Detonation. Restore 10 health to a friendly unit. Deal damage to the front enemy unit equal to four times the amount healed. Whoa. That's intense. Okay. So, I, I imagine that this, this makes a difference because if your guys only have two health that need to be healed, then you're going to deal eight damage, which is like, you know, it's fine. But if you can get a big heal off, that's not bad. Here, deal three damage and use the unit to the front or consume, which means it can only be played once per battle and you get a, f a five regen. Wow. So it's kind of like rage, but for healing. Oh, that's good. And it's free. Oh, it's a tough call. I like this too, because you get that damage output. You know what? Let's do this. Let's take the, let's take the detonation. Okay. Now, before we choose a path, let's see. And I think something like this we can get from both sides. Gain an artifact, restore health, which we don't need. Forge your spells to gain new powers and then get another unit. I wouldn't mind getting an artifact. Uh, the pyre remains is kind of useless at this exact moment. But I, I think artifacts are really cool because they change your run. So let's see. Plus three magic power increases the amount of damage dealt with 
dealt and health restored by spells. So if we're doing plus three damage on those fireballs and plus three healing on the heal spells, damn. Train steward units gain damage shield two and multi-strike one. What? Okay, these are both cool. Nullify the next source of damage, two. So they get to do two times. And then they also have multi-strike, so they get one additional attack. That seems pretty nice. I mean, they're going to get rid of the... They're going to nullify those first two sources, and it's going to be done. Whereas this, I can keep healing for extra, and I can keep spamming spells. The units, once played, are, are gone, but the spells keep coming back. That's a tough one, but I think I'm going to go Tempered Talisman here. So we can see it's up here, um, just to keep track of things. We don't need to restore health. What's this thing all about? As you pass a train graveyard, you notice several of your... Oh, cool. So this is like a little uh, story check. You notice several of your fallen allies. Within the beasts of gnarled steel lie now extinguished pyre shards. Even further inside the rubble, you can make out some last protected treasures. Perhaps if you were to relight the pyre shards using some of your own, the trains would reveal their value. Okay. Okay, cool. So we're trading pyre health for this and because we uh because we're on that side with the pyre health we can just heal back up i think upgrade a unit with plus 15 health well we can get blood for blood so when your pyre kills a unit restore five pyre health or friendly units get plus 10 and heartless but they can't be healed now actually it's funny in my first run that i did before uh, I got the Petrified Heart, and I ran into problems with that because half of our cards are based on healing. So, you know, probably not the best selection for us. I actually think we just take this small hit to our Pyre Health, and we we buff another unit. I think that's fine. We could even go here. This is, our Steelworker just gets, like, incredibly tanky. Uh, this unit already has these things here, but I guess... This works differently. Learning. Very cool. So these are probably the upgrades that you can buy. And then anything you get from these type of situations can be added on. That's the way that I'm seeing that. The other option is to just give it to, to uh, this steel worker. And we just make him like a mega tank. Is he still, he's still dealing 10 damage. This guy's got spikes. Yeah, let's go here. Let's go steel worker. We're down to 77. As the pyre shards flicker to life, the treasure within now revealed as the pyre moves removes its final defense. Yet, as you leave, the pyre shards goes out once more, this time for good. You are all that is left. Let's depart. Okay, and then we can restore. That's excellent. So we'll watch for those, knowing that we're going to be trading uh, health for that. And if we get lucky, maybe we have those all the time. Okay, Daedalus. Now, you, you can see if you're paying attention. This guy's got some... He's a bit of a... He's a heavier hitter, and he's a tank with wings. Heavily armored creations protect this ex-professor in his quest to safeguard Seraph in the winged. Plating seal. Constructed explosives enter with damage shield. Interesting. And that's like that damage nullification that we saw. Here we go. Construct explosives, enter with damage shield. It's a battle effect. Okay. Daedalus is the strongest boss you faced yet. He moves between fours freely, but can be attacked if you clear out other enemies on that floor. So he brings in this, right? This bomb has a triggered ability and will explode on its turn dealing damage. Most over units with the purple trigger icon to see the details of their abilities. So, he can't, if we attack this or put any damage onto it, he's going to nullify it, right? So, you'd have to do it twice. On this, on his turn, he's going to despawn and deal 10 damage to the front enemy unit. But we don't have any units up there. And I don't plan on putting any up there right now. So, I think we just hold off on that. Where do we want to go? This is actually a kind of a nice combo. We've got tank. We've got our Hornbreaker Prince with multi-strike. Um, I don't have a good way to... I don't have a good way to deal with this trusted priest, unfortunately. But let's go here. Let's do the Steelworker. And the Hornbreaker Prince. And then... 
I guess we can throw our train steward up there. You're gonna take 10 damage. You know what? Let's put him up here. We'll put him on the third level. Good luck, buddy. So that's a little annoying, but we can deal with them. Now we've got a damage shield out here, and this is a bit of a problem. We can go, uh, because of what we drew, this is not a great draw by any stretch of the imagination for multiple reasons. Um, let's start at the top. One, he's just going to go and he's going to kill this guy, and that's kind of a waste. So I could, I'd have to use two torches to kill this guy. The second problem is that this person's going to heal for plus five again, which I don't like either. Um... But it's still going to be relatively low. And I think we just get rid of this. We also have the Overcharged Apprentice. Triggers when you cast a spell on this floor, you get plus one damage. He's only at two right now, which isn't bad. Um, I think I think that's going to be the play, but... We'll see. We'll see. I can apply... I, I guess we can apply this regen. Doesn't matter to him. Let's put it here. So that when we do take this damage, we can uh, get that back. We get a little damage on the boss because we cleared out the bomb there. Notice our armor is gone now, but we're going to gain it back. Okay, this is dirty. So we put this one behind. That's a little problematic. Hmm. I think now... He's only at three health. I think we get rid of some of these problems, like this healing here. And these guys can go up to the top. I'm not worried about that. I'm not worried about that too much. I can't do two attacks on this, so it's just going to be what it is. We can throw a regen on here, maybe, or I can throw a train steward in here. The problem with this is that they're both going to attack. He would survive, actually. Train steward would survive. Yeah, let's do this. So we will kill this one. This one, will, this one will make it, but that's okay. And we'll torch out maybe... Actually, if I get rid of this guy, maybe that's the way to go. Or we can prevent the more damage to the pyre. Let's do that. Let's get rid of him. These guys are fine. We might take a little damage on the pyre. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, we kill this one. This guy moves up. And you can see we're going to take a bit of damage here, but... I love that it shows you the preview for what's going to happen, because, like, trying to figure all of that out would just be... Can you imagine? That's too intense for somebody like me. Another damage shield. All right. So, we've got our situation handled here. Uh, we can restore 13 health to a friendly unit. Um, that actually helps here. This is buffed now because of the uh, talisman. And we deal 5 damage with those torches. We could slot in this uh, fledgling imp down here to give rage to all of these guys. I wouldn't mind playing this train steward. And then I think we just let this thing play out. And if we do a restoration here, we're going to heal quite a bit. And we're going to deal a lot of damage to this guy. That makes sure that this floor takes a heavier beating. If we want... Yeah, let's, do, let's put the imp in here. And then I can torch something, or we can play our buffed unit, which I think would be better. Let's put him in front now. Kind of tank up a bit. Oh, I that's yeah, that's a misplay. That's totally a misplay, because uh, this unit's just going to kill him, which is unfortunate. But nobody's reaching the top now, so we're all right. Okay, we're damage shielded there. Um, so the way I could deal with this is if we go de the restoration detonation. And he takes... He nullifies that, but then we can torch it and get rid of it. We can apply six rage if we want, but honestly, look at this. We're going to lose our armor... And one health, so I think that's fine. These both get cleared out, no problem. 
Yeah, I think that's the way to go. We'll go like so. Torch this. We're going to get some attacks in on him. It's not that big of a deal, but it is It's something. And then we'll apply uh, some healing here. Yeah, I'm really happy we picked the talisman now. The big heals are nice and the big uh, fireballs are even better. Okay, final wave. Let's roll. So now it's just versus him. So you can see here, he's going to clear all of us out. We're going to deal 91 damage currently. Uh, let's put the train steward here. And then we'll do the heavy torch damage. Let's let it roll. I think he's in pain by the sounds of things. Now, 134 health. I'm not feeling super confident about that. Um, not feeling super confident about it. If I descend a unit here, do, I, I don't think that actually helps me. Especially because we don't need the healing. I can apply the rage. Uh, the problem is with his damage output, he's going to he's gonna destroy these dudes. So this is going to be like a little bit of a pyre battle. Okay, let's go. We're going to need something beefy here, but we, we just don't have it. We just don't have it. So, this would be a good time to check to see if this actually does anything. Because he doesn't actually require the healing. Yeah, no. Okay, so it is actually the damage that's... Uh, damage is based on what's actually healed. And sure, we might as well put this on. We're going to take a bit of a beating here. That's a pretty hefty beating, if you ask me. But uh, we just didn't have much to deal with them. Okay, we got uh, 75 coins, rare packs, a unit draft, draft a primary or allied clan unit, and major enhancements. Okay. Reinforce. Consume this. You can do it once per battle. Double armor on a unit. You know where that would go, but... It's very situational. We don't have a ton of armor unless we get lucky and, and enemies aren't even chewing through that guy's armor that we have. Apply quick where attacks... Oh, we get to actually attack before enemy units. That's cool. Very cool. Very cool, actually. If we look at our deck right now... So if he attacks first with that multi-strike, that's 12. But then we also have our Steelworker just attacks for 10. Ooh, interesting. Or channel song. Draw a unit and enhance it with plus 20 attack, plus 20 health, and zero cost. And you can use it once. Now, do we get to choose the unit is the question. Because if we can buff this guy, <laughs> just go all in on the steel worker. Uh, that could be cool. These are both awesome. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take channel song. Unit draft, Awoken Hollow. So this is uh, a unit from the Awoken side. When you summon it, you gain 40 max health. And Rejuvenate, plus one and plus one. Triggers when healed, even at full health? Well, damn. Or we have a Horned Warrior for 30 damage output. But this is coming in at 15 and 55. <laughs> or Branded Warrior. Uh, he's got a Rage of 3, Slay, triggers after dealing a killing blow, apply Rage 2 to friendly units. Oh, do we just go with the big beefy boys? The challenge with the Horned Warrior is he's hard to protect. We ha He would have to sit in the back, right? We do have some tanks that he could sit behind with 30 damage. That's not bad. And it's like, what do I value more? Do I value the health or do I value the damage? Because we were low damage in that last round, but this guy wouldn't have even been able to put out much damage. So I think we're going to take the Awoken Hollow. Maybe that's a trap. Okay, here's our enhancement. So we can get plus one Ember per turn. Uh, your Pyre also gets plus 10 attack and plus 30 health. We could draw an extra card every turn 
or we have extra capacity on each floor. I think our, our problem right now of the three is probably this. It's probably our ember. So I'm going to take that. And then we get a little bit of healing there. Cool. Okay, you're starting to get the rhythm. Starting to feel it a little bit. I think we have to go for, um, for pyre health here. And we go here to duplicate any card except our champion. This is to upgrade units, gain an Awoken unit. Yeah, no, I think we go down here. So, Hellvent, duplicate any card except for our champion. I'm really tempted to bring in the Steelworker. Really tempted. I wonder if we duplicated the uh, Train Steward, if he comes in with the buffs as well. I bet he does. Hmm. Or we could double this guy. Tough to say what I like more. He's gaining 40 health. But he takes up three slots. So that's another thing to be considering, right? Is we're gonna be um we're gonna be filling up those those floors fairly quick. Whereas this guy I can definitely play him more easily than here. That's a tough one. You know what? I'm gonna take the awoken hollow. Let's duplicate here. Okay. Then we'll do the pyre health. And select to remove up to two cards. I don't know if there's anything I, I necessarily want to remove here. At least not yet. Like, I, I think maybe one restore card. Like, maybe we're... Maybe, but now that we have these bigger guys with all this health, I think we leave it. I don't, I don't think we're actually going to ditch any cards. Okay, Clip Tormentors. Undergo trials for greater risk and reward. So basically, we can say uh, we're willing to take on an additional challenge, and we would gain a random artifact. Non-boss units get multi-strike. So these guys. Uh, adds a self-mutilation card to the top of your draw pile. That's pretty bad. Uh, and what it adds is this Scourge. We have to play one Ember to, to get rid of it. Otherwise, our Pyre takes three damage. And then we have the Porcupine. 12. So it, you can see we went from 7 attack to 8 attack to 12 attack. He's got 300 health. Um, combat in this room continues. Yeah, he's relentless. He's a boss. Do we want to give him multi-strike? Are we feeling ballsy? Are we feeling ballsy? Get a random artifact. You know, you know what? I don't know. This could backfire. It probably, probably will. This is the overconfidence I talked about earlier. Okay. Well, this guy, multi-strike, doesn't bother me at all. This dude also doesn't really bother me. Plus, what's cool is because this is buffed, we can just kill this, this Absolver. No prob, Bob. So we've got five slots, which is basically an Awoken Hollow and our Horn Prince, and then I torch this guy. Okay, cool. Now, we do have to heal this up, which is... I like that. I like that. He doesn't just come in with the max with the max buff. Um, man, I can't believe these things are both like. Yeah. Okay. Right. Because we started with four. He was one. We can play him up here, and we can play the others. Amazing. And then you can take this slot. Now, if we get that card that pushes somebody down, uh, what was that card called? Right here. Restoring Retreat, that would actually be awesome for these guys. We just slam them down to that bottom group and overfill our front, uh, our first line here. Could be nice. Uh, we are going to deal... This is going to be a bit of a problem to try and chew through, but we'll get there. He doesn't hurt us at all, so if it goes to the top, go for it. Now, okay, a Collector. So these things show up randomly, I think, and if we can kill it... Uh, we gain 75 gold. Flees from battle if not rooted or dazed. So I have one chance to kill it here. So I, I have to torch. I have to torch it and I would get 75 gold. The downside is... Um, well, actually, we would go restoration detonation here. And then... I'd throw our steelworker on floor two. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. Okay, let's go here for the heal up and the damage. 
Now we're killing both as well. Let's take the torch up to this to get the gold. And then let's roll the steel worker into this middle section. And I'll throw a train steward in that top level. Uh, we have both of these guys played, our steel workers played. Actually, we have. Let's see. What's left in our draw pile? Fledgling imps and train stewards. Yeah, okay. So I'll play one. And then we want to save the other slot for our upgraded train steward. Mind you, we're going to have slots here if we can push down. So we'll see. I'm just trying to think a little bit ahead here. I'm trying to get my, my strategy brain going. It's not as easy as you might think. Okay, only Sarah's bright light will burn. Yeah, I, I bet. Yeah, cool. Draw a unit, enhance it with 20 attack, 20 health. Four available. Now, we'll see if this is just a random one or not. We do have a kill here, which is beautiful. We have regen. Okay, let's do this. Okay, so it is a random one. Some spells can only be played once per battle. Cards will consume or place in the consume pile when played. All right. I mean, this is still cool, I guess. Uh, <laughs> it's not... I wonder, okay, I, I, this could be a huge waste, but this imp, if I don't play him right now, is he going to keep this? Because I just don't think there's a good spot to play him. I could put him up here, but he's going to give rage and lose all his stuff over over the next couple of turns anyway. He's still coming in 21-21. Let's do the heals here. There's only one way I'm ever going to find this out. I'm going to let the imp go. Let's see if he's buffed in here. He is. Okay, good. Very good. Very, very good. So once we go through all of this, we'll shuffle these back in and we'll double check this draw pile. Okay. Now, we I think this is where we, we throw down the descend, right? When we descended before, they moved to the back. So I don't necessarily want to put my steel worker in the back. It's still good. But if I go a restoring retreat to bring this guy down, then we go... I can't do the ritual of battle. Uh, then we do like our two restores here, I think, and see if that's enough to save this unit. Yeah, it seems to push to the back. Okay. I'll do this. That keeps them alive, and this will be even better if I kill this unit. There we go. Now we're only taking seven. I think that's good. I'm happy with it. Okay, cool. What's left? So there's our big boy. We're going to put him in front. Do we want those spikes to be triggering? Looks like we might need a little bit of work there, though. Yeah. You know what? I think I, I screwed up again. Because he's just going to take the thing and... We probably should have put him in the back. Probably should have done that. Whoops. Oh, well. Who's going to get through our front line now? Nobody. That's who. She did take this. She does take the spikes there, which is, you know, good, but. Little pyre damage. Never hurt anybody. Except for the pyre. Okay. So. Uh, she's going to kill here. Unless I double torch which would prevent further pyre damage right now. But here, this is a very, very scary problem. I think I do the restoration detonation here. That's going to be max heal, max damage on this guy. The porcupine. Then we got these two dudes. Going to add those self-mutilations. Okay, that's, that's a huge chunk of damage there. Don't know if it's worth... 
Because this is going to come up, and we're going to take 10 more damage. I'm going to for sure kill one. And then I think what I'll do is... Well, even if I torch here, it's not going to matter. Because our unit's going to die. She's going to go up. She's going to attack. She's... So this unit's going to get their attacks in regardless. So I'll get rid of this guy. And then... Do I just tank this up? Because now my worry here... Oh, that's good enough to get it. Awesome. Okay. So one of the things that I'm going to have to learn a little bit is like... When we're thinking about applying stuff, we're not going to see what the resolution is until we do it. But we are going to kill this unit here. The mistake that I almost made was if we just buff here, if we just focus everything here and we don't kill it on that first attack, then we have all these units just like doing... Well, I guess on the boss, it doesn't matter. Actually, on the boss, it doesn't matter because they fight out until everyone dies. So let's roll. I like that that happens in between each round, like it's because it's his full turn. So against the boss, he gets those additional benefits. All right. Awesome. Three turn boss rush, man. Beat it on the first go. Insane. We did pull off a cool combo that we were kind of building towards. That worked out nicely. 10 damage taken, minus 10%. Uh, and then the trial bonus, too. Yeah, excellent. That was that was good. That That double strike was probably a bit risky. I don't know what split anvil is, but let's see. When you play a... Oh, this is what we got for the for doing the challenge. When you play a spell, spells in hand that cost less are reduced to three... Or to reduce to zero for the turn. That's only going to apply to like a couple of spells. Hmm. Piercing. Damage dealt by this card ignores armor and shields. Uh, apply six rage. So this is an example of one we could play, and then we could play the other uh, fireballs for free. Or apply three rage to friendly units. I don't know, man. I might skip this, but like piercing damage is good, I guess. Let's take this. Let's take another spell, because we can cast that multiple times. And then we've got deal 8 damage to the front unit. Draw plus 1 next turn for free. 5 regen. That could go really nicely on our big tanky dudes that we just got. And then enhance with plus 4 attack and apply 4 spikes. Nice thing about th grabbing this as a spell is that it kind of opens up more options for a split anvil. So maybe we take this. Alrighty. Okay, we've got Pyre Health on the left. We can upgrade our champion there. Duplicate cards, remove cards. Here's the the concealed caverns again. But let's go. Let's grab the health. Uh, there's coins here. Forge your units to gain new powers. Let's roll. Upgrade a unit with rage of five, spikes of four, or multi-strike. I like multi-strike. We could re-roll this. But if I gave somebody like any of these dudes multi-strike, that's kind of nutty. Let's do it. And... Do we just like go crazy on that unit? Because the spikes are nice on a big tank like this too, right? And I, I don't think there's any card that I look at right now that I don't like. I think we are okay. We could... Should we refresh this? I don't know, like, how long these coins last. Let's let's do it. Oh. When this unit dies, return its card to the top of the draw pile. Okay. Okay. So, that's nice. This one's full. I would have done this over the spikes for sure. But I'm going to put it on this hollow, I think. I think if we put it on this hollow, um, yeah, that could be nice. And then if we get another decent upgrade, 
Like even this this strength stone. <laughs> Coming in with 21. Doesn't have the uh the multi strike of the other unit, but let's just buff whatever we can. I'm gonna save some money, obviously. Yeah, okay, cool. We have uh 20 possible health to heal. And then we can upgrade our champion. So we can go to Brawler 2, which is multi-strike 2 now, so he hits three times. Or we go to Reaper, where when he kills, uh, this damage starts stacking a lot more. So even if we get... Yeah, Slay plus 10. Hmm. You know what? Let's take this. We still have the multi-strike. And... After we get the killing blow, we get plus 10. Yeah, yeah, let's let's do that. Okie dokie. Hidden Assault. Sneaky clip to infiltrate your train. Use spells and higher floors to take them out. Enemy units enter with spell shield times two? I don't think so, Tim. Not today. <laughs> Not to Especially sneaky clipped. And we have to use spells to take them out? We don't want to be blocking those. Not a target in combat. Loses one stack every turn. So you can only kill these with spells. And then self-made harpy. Multi-strike four. Yo. Relentless. Yeah. Multi-strike four? <laughs> okay. So he does... He's going to do 16 damage. Every attack. Okay. Okay. Picking up what you're putting down. Yeah, so not a target in combat for the next turn. So with this spawn, we can torch one. And then we could consider putting people up here right away. Here's our multi-strike with spikes. Yeah, you know what? I actually think... I actually think we could try... Uh, okay, I have, a, I have an idea... I have an idea for something I would like to try and figure out here. But if I do... If we go here, okay? We're going to put the Steelworker in front. Knowing that these guys, two of them are at least going to move up. I go Hornbreaker Prince uh, behind that. Or do I go here? Where's that card that moves people down? Can I move anybody? To send a unit. So I hope this guy still counts as a as a unit. He's still he's a champion, but I'd like to put him in the back if possible. So I might put him up to the top here. But the problem is then we don't get the benefits of the slay, right? We want to build that up. We want to get him as many kills as possible. All right, let's put him here. And then we'll put this one in this slot for now. Uh, oh, right. Yeah, they still get to attack. They just can't be attacked. Well, when we torch one, we'll save this. So we'll be low, but it's okay. And they'll end up killing themselves because of the spikes. So, all right. I hope we can rejuvenate this character. Come on. Didn't quite get it, but it's okay. Extinguish here. We can torch that. Eight piercing. I don't really care about this guy. I care that he's blocking him, though. So harvest. When somebody on this, when a unit on this floor dies, he's going to gain armor. Okay. This unit's going to die from one attack. I think we go here now. We put endless. Oh yeah, that's right. We can't. We can't. We can't. Please from battle. Triggers after combat. So if we put this hollow up at the top, then we could. Um, and we could defeat that. I think. Yep. I wonder if I do this, I could still get the healing. I just don't get the descend benefit, right? 
But I think that probably... That keeps her alive. I'm fine with that for now. And then, because of Anvil, we get to play all of these. Yeah. X I totally planned all that, you guys. I planned all of that. Just kidding. <laughs> uh, what do I do here? Eight piercing. Get rid of him a little bit. I actually don't know. Maybe I, I could have just left this guy. Eh. We're building up this armor here, though, which is nice. All right. So these five attacks would kill, but I have a plan for that. Enhance with four. So if we play this first... Then we can also play these for free. Yeah. Oh, man. This Anvil card. Damn. That's so cool. Okay. Where's our spikes currently? It's here. So, yeah. Let's go just way more spikes. And then we're going to go... Uh, regen. Regen. I only have one slot left. I could go here... But if we look at the other units that we have access to, so we have our buffed train steward, we have our fledgling imp, and then we have, uh, well, that's it. So we do have one of these guys with endless here, which I guess, I don't know if that's good to have endless uh, in that top row, but I could torch one of these guys. This is fine. This guy looks like he might be getting up there, though. Minus 20. Minus 12 here. I could save some of that. I think I'm going to try to weaken this guy a bit. And oh, I don't... I really don't want to play this train steward there. I really don't. Maybe I'll play the train steward here. Yeah. Okay. I think we can stop that guy on the top floor, right? It's going to be close. If I put in a uh, train steward... Eh, I think we're going to take a bit. Actually, no. If I do this, get a big heal up here. That helps us in a lot of ways. That helps us in a lot of ways. Let's do this. Get rid of him. Then... We go... Restore here. Restore here. Train stewards. Here's our beefy one. We'll put him at the top. Now, the only problem is we have one other card that we can play, that Imp. Uh, so he'll have to go in that middle section. Oh, yeah. These guys, I, I feel pretty good here. Feel pretty good. We got 15 armor built up. Uh... Channel song. One is available. So we would reshuffle these, I guess. And we would get our train steward. Or steward. But then I can't even play him. Like, I literally can't even slot him in there. Even if he was free. So. Bomberville. But that's okay. Let's do here. Apply the three rage. Just convenient. Uh, we'll apply regen down here. We'll torch this guy, and we'll let the rest go. All right. Next. Uh, well, we're boss mode now. So if I do this, we're going to get our full heal out our, and our four times the damage. So, I mean, that's pretty much as good as I can ask for. Like, do I descend a unit here? That's the question. If I descend our hero unit, we get a lot of attacks in, man. And if I descend this, then everything else is free. Yeah, you know what? I think we'll descend. We're all going to die. It is sad, but that's life. 
This could change, though. Look at that. We're all... He's almost dead. We're gonna be fine. Uh, and then I can play the train steward now here. Okay. Move it up to Ultra for the boss. Okay, still not dead, but you will be soon. So we play this for sure. Man, this anvil is so strong. So strong. I'm gonna go Rage 6 there. And then we can play all of these. Doesn't even matter. All right, excellent. Two-turn boss rush. Pyre Chomper. Summon. And you gain four energy. Or uh, ember. I mean, that's good. But now with this anvil, there's a lot of situations where that's not even going to be that useful. And he's going to take up a slot. I don't know. This is free. You can use it once. Apply Rage 3. Or applies Rage 3 and armor. For a cost of two. I'm looking for these, like, these two-cost ones so that all the other spells are free. I think we do this. And we just build our deck around trying to cast all these spells. I think we're going to apply quick. That seems awesome. Let's take this. Okay. Hope you guys don't mind a little bit of a longer first video for this. A lot of like explaining stuff that we're doing, but I feel like it's uh, I feel like it's worthwhile still. Okay, we're gonna take the twenty health. That's gonna take us up to max. Offer a random selection of artifacts. Yeah. Friendly units get plus three health. Enemies get minus one attack. Apply days to enemy units when they enter your pyre room, and the pyre gets minus five. Units with days skipped its next attack. Ugh, so that's kind of like a last ditch effort, hey? Kind of a last ditch effort. I could spend 40 and re-roll these. It just means that um, we're gonna get, we get a free attack at lower. It's, we're actually at hitting at 30 now. This is kind of like a save. Only when they get to the pyre, though. And if they're at the pyre, are we already dead? Maybe. Maybe. That basically means we get a free 25 damage attack. Which might be a lot, man. That could be the difference maker. Everybody could... You know what? I'm going to roll once. Rage has an additional stack. Friendly units enter with five armor. Units cost minus two. Hold on a second. So, all of our units will be free. <laughs> that could be, that's cool. That's cool. But the armor is nice, too. Hmm. The armor is nice, too. But it can, it's going to get removed pretty quickly. You know what? I'm going to take this. I think that's kind of a cool combo with what we already got going on. Is there anything I want to remove? Is there anything I'm feeling like, uh, maybe horn break? Like maybe horn break? Just because it's kind of like, it's that, it's a weird one. Um, it only costs one, so if we cast it with other stuff, it could be good. Uh, inflame, but inflame lets us trigger other spells for free. I think we leave all our cards right now. Okay. Here we go. Clipped Absolver's guard fell to weigh you down with guilt before the warrior can make her killing blow. Remove these weights to thwart their assault. Fell and her allies will add scourge cards to your hand and deck. 10 and 1200. Fell the wings of light. Final boss is Seraph of the Chaste. How close are we? We're in six right now. Okay, we got we got some work to do. 
We got some work to do. Felonary allies will add scourge cards to your hand and deck. Now, if those are spells, could be nice. Oh, here. It's a, okay, so I have to play this. Everything, everything else is free. Uh, we have these guardians, which is protecting her. So 70 damage on each, 70 health. They can't move between floors or change position. Then we got absolvers. Add the self mutilation card to the top of your pile after combat. So I have to purge this because I would take damage and everything else is going to be free anyways. Um, I kind of liked the idea of having our steelworker gain this armor every turn. So if I put him like near the top, in theory, he's going to gain so much armor over time. Um, I'm going to I'm going to play it safer and put him in that middle slot where we had him before. And then this one's endless. And this one has the multi strike and the spikes. It's a tough call. I think we'll go here. Put our champion there. And then we'll put... I mean, either one could be in front here, actually. I think we go like this. Okay. We're going to deal 60 here. We'll get rid of it on the next turn. Now these Scourge cards, they don't even feel too bad because of these artifacts that we have. Let's get rid of this. Uh, I'm going to heal here. Get rid of that first one. Go again. And then... This guy will keep moving up, which is going to be a bit annoying. Let's get rid of him. Okay. Let's ditch this bad boy. Does not count as a spell. We can play this, though, where we can descend a unit and restore health. So let's put our big tank down there. That means we can then slam extra units that we get up here. I guess for now, I'll put you here. I could also just not play the imp, and then we could play him later on once we have actual units. We can apply quick. Uh, who does the most? 18 times 2. Plus we get, uh, whenever we're healed, we get that rejuvenate. So we get uh, our attacks stack even more. Yeah, let's do that. Oh, that's dirty. That's dirty. Can I just put this on? Oh, I can start putting it on here. That's actually not a bad idea. I'm going to save the imp for a better for a better spot. Okay, she's protected up top. Now ritual of battle. We're going to put this down so we can cast everything else for free. Oh, this is disgusting. This is absolutely disgusting. It's disgusting. Because we're attacking twice here, so now now that in here's the thing too, now that Slay is going, maybe I should have done this. Yeah, maybe I should have. Let's go here. We'll go Porch. Pierce. And who do we have? We can bring our big train steward out. We didn't get it. Still beefy, though. And I'll start this top layer. See you later. Then we want to cast... 
Okay, so we can only cast one of these. The other heals will be free. So we get attacks and spikes or uh, rage and armor. Do we want some armor here? Or do we buff these spikes to unimaginable levels? What's her attack? Multi strike. I'm not sure. It was big, though. I think it showed us, right? I just don't know if that armor is going to be that good. Let's do this. And then every time that re that regen procs, we also get that attack damage stacking. There's my good train steward. So I'm actually going to save this. I don't want to fill that slot. Look at the slay damage. Wow. Look at the slay damage. Okay, so same thing. Those become free. Here's our big boy that we're going to put at the top. Put him in the back. And then regen. Regen. Torch. This thing will go eventually. Now we're hitting the boss hard. Heck yeah. Get rid of that. Now we can descend another unit. Ooh. Okay. Let's do it. Let's descend here. Look at how huge this gets. I don't know. There's got to be a max. I don't know what it is, but... I had only heard about this because somebody had mentioned that had played it before that you can bring these units down and overstack. I'd never seen a card like that. And now I see just how powerful it is. It's insanely powerful. We'll play this imp up here, okay? These guys are going to get these stacks. Um, I'll put some damage on this one. Regen there. Got some boss damage in. Final wave. Yep, bring it. I actually feel like... Look at how much damage we're dealing. This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. Uh, 35 to here. Right there. Rage time 6. We attack twice. These guys still die. Right now. Maybe not even... Look at that. We're going to beat the boss. This this combo that we came upon is so sick. That's going to give us a lot of bonus, too. Wait, I, oh, I thought, sorry, maybe I missaw that, because I thought we were going to kill her. That's my bad, I guess. Um, minus 45. Okay, now we, okay. <laughs> Might have spoke too soon. Might have spoke too soon. I can't bring this unit in because we don't have the slots. Oh. I thought we saw that we were killing her on that turn. We add regen, doesn't really matter there. Once we get to the top, it'll still be okay, I think. Man, I totally thought we just like had her no problem. Uh, the spike, she just hit, she just one hits these guys. It doesn't doesn't really matter. We're gonna t we're gonna okay. Well, let's see. That was, that was pretty hefty. I actually... I'll have to watch that back because I was convinced that we had her on that first row. Oh, well. Okay, rare pack and major enhancements. Impolate. Deal damage to the front enemy unit equal to 20x the number of imps in your deck. So right now it's 20 plus 3. How many imps do we have? We have fledgling imp. That's it. 
Don't have a lot of imps. Restore friendly units to full health. All of them? Yes. Or we do the consume. Again, we'd have two consumes, which you can bring in those huge units to get really strong. Restoring to full is nice, though, but let's do this. And then we get more energy, which we actually don't need. I think if we get more cards, that's actually better for us. Or or even the, the capacity could be nice now. Because we're able to play a lot of our cards. I think I'm going to take the capacity. Ooh, looking scary. It's 20 health there. Artifact. Oh, I'd like to get an artifact, but... Gotta take that health. We're so close to the end. I mean, I could duplicate another one of these. Uh, this one with Endless or this one with the Multi-Strike and the Spikes. I think either one's good. Maybe Endless just because it's more units that we can play if they go down. The thing that I'm seeing, though, is that these units are pretty much lasting until the end. Uh, and then they're going down to the boss. So the endless part, we did actually, we did benefit from endless once there, I think. Let's do that. And then... You know what? If anything, I'm going to get rid of one train steward. I know we just upped our uh, space on each uh, level, but... Yeah. The Penitent. These purifiers will burden you with the weight of your sins until your penance has been paid in full. Enemy units enter with 20 armor? No. I want to try and win. I want to try and win. So this guy's got armor of 80. Uh, okay. 20 health. No attack. Relentless. This is the boss. So he's going to, on revenge, triggers when damaged, gains attack. Ooh. That's scary. Starts out weak, but near the top, he's going to get really strong. So we should, I guess, be, like, top-loading our damage, if possible. To try and deal with the boss. Okay. Purifier. Ultimate Penance card to the top of your draw pile. Got both of our Endless Ones. We should start building that slay damage here. And then with this imp, do I want him to take up a slot? Like, I can't fit anything else there anyway, so I might as well. And these guys are going to benefit, so cool. And then we'll put this guy on the second floor. Okay, yeah, we've got a collector up there. Here's one with spikes now. Or we could go steel worker. You know what I might do is put the steel worker on the top. We'll put the spikes here. And then our torches are all free. Ultimate penance. Let's get rid of that again. And... This one's going to go... This one's going to go... Put this here. Okay. We're already benefiting from that extra space. Okay. Now. Three rage and five armor. I like that it comes to the top of the draw pile, too. So we can just put this right back. And then... We go Rage here. Go Restore. Go a little bit of Rage and some armor here, just to give us a chance to buff. Or I could do this. Yeah, so this one stays. And then the train steward. 
This is our buffed one. Let's go to the top. Okay, so we got to get rid of this. We've got Sharpen, which will make the others free. The problem with this one is that... Uh, well, let's see what's in here. It's going to be this guy that's buffed. I mean, that's not bad. I guess I could wait till... We could wait for one of these guys to die and go back in. Let's see. So this guy's going to die. I can't do anything about that right now. It's not endless, so we're going to lose that one. I'm going to enhance this. I can't clear either of these. Alright, I'm gonna play this. And put you in the back. And then, who do we torch here? At least that'll make sure this one dies. I don't have any other slots. Okay, one health. Ooh, look at all this healing! That's amazing. Unfortunately, we're gonna head up to the pyre. The pyre's gonna have to fight some of this. I don't see a way around it. Scary. Let's get rid of this one. Descend and restore. Okay. I think I might just send this one down and like stack this one again. I could do that there. It's a little risky. Uh, we can apply quick. So I think we'll put quick on our champion. And then if I go channel song, who's that going to bring out? It's just a train steward. The only other benefit of, of channel song is uh, bringing out one of these guys when they die, but we'll have opportunities for that probably. Let's just get this on the second floor. And then I'm going to torch... Here. Because this is going to go. We'll weaken this one for the next round. Oh boy! Okay, this is going to be scary. Going to be scary. Minus 335. Like... I can't deal that I can't deal enough damage for that. I can't. That's insane. That's insane. What would be my best th way to do this? Do we want to cast cast in flame or sharpen? Hmm. Because he's going to take some time to chew through here, right? Because he's he, he's going to get stronger every time, but... I think I'm going to do this. So these are all free now. This is going to hit the front guy here, and he's going to go up to four. I think that's worth for the big damage trade-off. And we'll heal here as well. 
We'll sharpen here as well. Uh, you know what? No, let's go sharpen here. Because with the quick, we're going to get those attacks in. And then if I do this, it's only, you know what? It's only eight damage. Let's put it here. Because I don't want to give him that extra. He's going to all, he's already going to get strong. Yeah, see, look at this. <laughs> He's gonna slaughter our pyre. I don't know if I can deal this much damage to him. 262. I mean, these guys are back in. That's something, but he's hitting for 33, man. For 33. Uh, I'm not even sure what I could do. I guess we put this in the back. I, honestly, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the right play is, but I think this is going to be it. <laughs> I think that's going to be it. Let's put this here. I know we'll at least get some attacks off here, but it's, it's not going to be enough. Oh, boy. I wish I could play that. We are doing 40 damage a hit, but... Uh, dang. Oh, that was so close, man. We did so good. We did so good, honestly. That was, that was excellent. For, like, having no cards unlocked... I'm thrilled with that. I am thrilled with that. So now, now we've unlocked uh, March of Shields, move a unit to the front and apply 10 armor. Hell yeah. Okay. And an artifact is unlocked now. Summon abilities trigger an additional time. So if you put that on those big tanky dudes, on that summon skill where they give extra health, they could essentially have like an insanely high health pool. And then if we do eventually pick up that card that maxes out your, like, instantly heals a unit to full. Oh, the possibilities are endless. We've leveled up uh, the Awoken as well. Apply Regen 2 and Spikes 2. Add a copy of this card to your discard pile. Man, that was such a cool combo of artifacts that we had to, like, everything like was free. Grant one stack of Spikes each time. Oh, plus one stack of Spikes each time it's applied. So you can definitely see that like the synergies that they're kind of going for. So look at all this, man. Like we've only discovered not even half of these cards and not even half of these cards. Um, once we play enough spells, we're going to unlock a new faction or clan. Once we use enough uh, units, we'll unlock this one. And then killing enemies gets us to the melting remnant. But man, this is cool. I know this first episode is probably really long. We're like hitting 90 minutes. If you guys made it this far, honestly, you're, you're the best. And uh, it, it flew by for me. So I, I hope it was fun for you guys. But uh, oh, this could be so fun. And then as we start getting unlocks over time, we're going to um, then we're going to get better cards, which makes the runs a little bit faster and stuff too. Right. So yeah, neat. Very cool. I love this. It's very Slay the Spire-esque in terms of how this stuff goes. But uh, one thing I'll show you. So I won't do a new run just here. Uh, let's go back to the main menu. Um, you can check out your run history. So this was the first one that I ever did. And uh, I made it to six. I was like, oh, man, maybe like beginner's luck. You know, we did pretty good. I was pretty happy. Now we made it to seven. That was very close. Um, but what's cool about this is I could come in here and I could copy this deep link. And then what I could do is uh, share it with you guys so that you can uh, view this run summary if you're interested. There's also this challenge generator. So if I say, hey, you guys can try this same run and let me know how you go, I'm pretty sure that's all this needs to do. If I just copy this now, then I guess you guys can just view the challenge. 
So maybe I'll do that. We'll see how it works. And I'll, I'll if I remember, I'll put it in the uh, description below. But uh, yeah, this is, a, I am having a such a good time. And I hope the videos aren't as long going forward. But, you know, we'll, we'll be explaining less. We'll be less tutorializing. We'll understand the mechanics more, so on and so forth. But anyways, if there was things that you guys uh, noticed that we could have done different, totally let me know. I'm all about learning on this series. So um, that would be exceptional. And just any other general tips or advice, I'm open to it. And I'm excited to like delve in here and unlock new factions, new cards, new whatever. And we'll go from there. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you uh, in the next one. All right. And maybe this is just the code. I don't know. Lights Donna creature. It's possible. Guys, thank you so much. Check out this game. Links in the description. Wish me luck. Bye for now.